The free soil movement actually has deep roots in the United States. It, it, it attracts people like Walt Whitman, um, people who you actually wouldn't expect. Walt Whitman, this sort of New Yorker, this New York editor um, who had grown up here and largely actually came to see the politics of the United States through this, um, or we, we actually often see the politics of antebellum America through his eyes. And Whitman was attracted to free soilism because for him it actually represented a kind of romantic purity. The West came to represent to him the one thing that might cleanse the nation of the dirty politics between North and South, between pro-slavery and anti-slavery. And while Whitman, for most of his career, is pro-slavery, he's anti-immigrant, he's actually sympathetic to the South, and he tends to be fairly antagonistic toward abolitionist and anti-slavery advocates for the most part. But the free soil movement attracts him in the way that it actually attracts many people who begin to develop by the 1840s and 1850s a kind of anti-institutional impulse in American politics, this sense that institutions were the problem, that government was the problem, parties were the problem. And the free soil movement had this uh, um, sort of extraordinary vision of the West as a place that could be free of slavery, free of the divisions, and actually come to democratize the United States. Um, the rest of the nation, that the West represented a place that could actually um, revive democracy in its purest form by keeping slavery out, but also its racist undercurrents by keeping black people out. Um, they also wouldn't be there, and that's one of the things that Whitman and other advocates were attracted to.